Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and I just wanted to do a video today to talk about the rest of the D23 news that I didn't cover. I know I went on a bit of a rant on the Miss Marvel show, but afterwards we got some good news for Marvel, that there's going to be a new She-Hulk show and a new Moon Knight show, and She-Hulk has been a character I've waited for in the MCU in some way or another for a very long time. She's a very interesting character in the comics. Um, for those of you who don't know, she is Bruce Banner's cousin named Jennifer Walters, who is a lawyer, and uh, she has to undergo a blood transfusion via Bruce, and that's how she gets some of his, the, his gamma blood in, in her, and uh, she becomes another Hulk. But the catch is, she has complete control over when she changes and how she behaves when she is the She-Hulk, and she actually, unlike Bruce, enjoys being the She-Hulk. So very interesting character, and I'm I'm just so thrilled not only that we can finally get her on the screen, we don't have much casting information yet, but that um, we have more Hulk things uh, coming out because of the weird deal with Universal where they can't actually give us a movie. Um, no casting news yet again. Um, I heard someone say they want Rosie O'Dawson for the role. I think that would be a really bad idea because I have no problem with Rosie O'Dawson as an actress. But I've seen what kind of characters she she plays and how she performs. And if they cast her in this role, it would just immediately tell me they're not they're not giving me the Jennifer Walters that was, would be really great. You need a, a an actor who can handle the sassiness of the character and the physicality of the role. So I'm hoping they get a bodybuilder to do it because she elk is only supposed to be the size of a female bodybuilder. Um, Anyway, they also have Moon Knight coming out, and I don't know much about Moon Knight other than he has a very niche but very uh, very vocal fan base, and they're very excited for this show. Um, and so I'm glad after there's um, uh, after people have been a little bit concerned that the MCU isn't going to be able to find its feet after the original Avengers are gone that they're giving they're making shows that people want to see now, and I, I will check all these out. Um, there's also rumors of an America Chavez show, and to be fair, some people freaked out about this online. I've heard that America Chavez, while she's rather infamous, or should I say, um, notorious at this point for a recent comic series by Gab Gabby Rivera, which was very hated, she was apparently, once upon a time, a very good character in the Young Avengers, and some people are saying that this could all lead into a Young Avengers TV show or movie. So I'm just going to wait and see. I just, when, when it comes to characters like America Chavez or Miss Marvel, who in the comics have not been very well written, I'm a little bit concerned, especially because um, uh, the MCU seems to... Uh, be leaning more into the virtue signaling area, area that a lot of, that um, the comics have gone full 100% virtue signaling and uh, to do more diversity in the movies you just have to do it right and so um, I'll give it a chance and I'll see what they do here and I'm curious to see where the MCU goes next anyway um, before I get on to Star Wars which I want to talk about um, which is pretty much an example of everything wrong with Hollywood and movie making and how the industry interacts with its fan base right now. I want to talk about Disney streaming in general. Uh, this is a time when we're really moving towards streaming and cable TV is pretty much dying and the streaming play, the streaming um, industry is really spreading out beyond Netflix and Hulu. Uh, I'm going to uh, be watching Disney streaming and I was so excited by all the things they were announcing even the stuff that didn't look good like Lady and the Tramp I'm like well I'm gonna watch everything um, I, I like I feel that Disney streaming with how big it is and how vast it is and how many people want to sign up for it is a huge step into us um, into how media is gonna be consumed in the future it's the next big push to have everything streaming and have everybody on board with just having their TV shows and movies on streaming I think it's going to hurt Netflix a lot, and I'm really surprised that something that's very small and that's really been struggling lately, like DC Universe, I'm really surprised that that's still going on and that they haven't uh, shut it down to have new shows with DC on HBO Max, you know, fresh shows. But there is rumors of a Green Lantern show potentially for HBO Max, so uh, we'll wait and see about that. Uh, I think DC Universe will go away eventually. It's very exciting times, though, for streaming, and... um. What was I going to say? Oh, yes. Um, the last thing that we've been hearing is that supposedly for the TV shows like Bucky and Falcon and WandaVision and various other uh, series on uh, Disney streaming, 
is that they're going to be released one episode a week, which is kind of a traditional thing to do. And people are upset because they say, well, this is just a scam by Disney to make sure people have to uh, keep the series, to keep paying customers on the series long enough because they'll have to um, wait out about six weeks to get the next, to get the entire show if they're six episodes long. And that's kind of a, a marketing tactic to make sure people stay subscribed to the service for a long time. And I don't think it's bad. I know a lot of people like binging. Um, the problem with binging is then when you can watch it, an entire show immediately, then and some people do, they start at midnight and then are done by the morning, you can have spoilers leaked immediately from that show and out on the internet, and especially with something like Marvel, which likes to keep uh, a lot of secrecy with what they're doing next. I can understand why they'd want to have smaller doses of content go out from that. So I don't mind it. I like it. I think that there's going to be in the future of streaming some binge shows and some weekly shows. Um, it, it's unlike DC Universe where I feel like they give you so little every week. Just so little quality. I think I think this is going to be good. That's something that's a format that's coming more from um, traditional cable TV. Anyway, um, on to Star Wars and... So they released a special look for the um, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, which is an absolutely terrible name. And um, count me in with the people who hated The Last Jedi. I thought it was the ultimate franchise killer. Um, it was disrespectful to, to the... And they, they've been absolutely disrespectful to the fan base who's criticized the movie. Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy will not accept criticism. But what they did with The, the Last Jedi, what it made me feel at the end is... Um, who, who are these characters at this point? I don't understand because there was so much subversion and so many um, twists and, and plot holes. I don't understand who Rey is, I don't understand who Finn is, I don't understand who Poe is, other than the flaws in the writing. Uh, Finn has a character who doesn't make any sense anymore. Poe, they tried to give him an arc with Holdo, but the arc didn't make sense, and Rey is just a Mary Sue character, a completely blank slate. They want her to be a cardboard cutout uh, of, of an empowered female character, but they don't know, they don't want to actually put in the work to make her an empowered female character. They just want her to be one without going through any actual struggles. She's always the all-powerful. And at the end of The Last Jedi, I'm like, well, where is there to go after this? Because I've seen other franchises like, um, uh, The Hobbit, or even at times when the MCU got low, where I was like, well, this, this is a bad movie, but I at least want to see how this finishes itself out. I don't feel that at all with Star Wars. I don't even know what it is anymore. And with all that, you know, spitting on the fan base and making such a bad movie, then we get this special trailer, and um, half of it is just going back through the other movies and and trying to bring some sentimental feelings of nostalgia out of the audience and I'm sorry Disney but you've ruined that you can't play on people's nostalgia so much especially since you essentially just stomped on it for The Last Jedi and killed all the characters not like they actually killed off characters even though they did but killed what these characters stood for and what people recognized about these characters so you can't pull another uh, a, a sentimental montage of the past and it's, it makes you feel like um, it just isn't going to work with fans anymore. They're going to feel like it's disrespectful again, like you're just manipulating them again, even though we know the mistakes you've made. But the problem is, um, going with all the other stuff in the trailer, you see Ray and, uh, you know, with a new light, an unchuck lightsaber, which makes no sense, no practical sense. You see an army of Star Destroyers, which is just overkill. You see glimpses of these characters. I have no idea what's going on. I've talked to people who have no idea what's going on. And the reason is, with Star Wars, with The Last Jedi making everything so muddled in this uh, the sequel trilogy and taking pre-established rules like how the force works and what you can do with the force and just basically saying, uh, just throwing them out the door just for anything, you know, making it so Yoda can now call lightning down to set trees on fire and making it so Luke can force project himself across the galaxy. I don't know how the force works anymore. I don't know what the, the, the resistance really is anymore or the rebels, whatever they're called. I don't know what um, 
what they're really fighting against, other than one is supposed to be the good side and one is supposed to be the bad side. I don't know what the Empire... Uh, is it the Empire? I thought it was or just Kylo Ren's army. We'll just call it that. I don't know what they're really fighting for either at this point, and I don't know the resources that they have either. So we look at this movie after The Last Jedi really just turned everything on its head and turned Star Wars into complete nonsense. And we're like, well, how can we predict anything that's going to happen in this movie? There are no rules anymore. There's no overall story to the sequel trilogy. There's no really binding theme that brings Star Wars together anymore. It's not really about anything anymore. So I don't think it's just that um, the trailer was confusingly put together when we got to the new footage, even though it was. I just don't think Star Wars is anything anymore because of The Last Jedi. And I don't think that you can... This The Last Jedi was so devastating. I don't think that anything can possibly fix it at this point unless you say that none of this is canon, unless you retcon it completely. And as for Palpatine in this movie, I really wish he wasn't coming back because now they're just going to take another beloved character from the original trilogy and put him in this and then destroy his character in every way possible. And I don't see J.J. Abrams as a franchise killer. He's a guy who is good, as many people have said, at taking uh, the atmosphere of something and taking what worked about it and just basically copy and pasting. And he has something to copy and paste now from The Last Jedi and the, the, um, the sequel trilogy that is just absolutely terrible. And at this point, taking things from Return of the Jedi or taking things from the original trilogy and putting them here, it's just going to make it worse. It's just going to ruin more things for people. Um, in terms of the box office of this movie, I think it's going to get more than Solo because this is supposed to be the finale. And I think a lot, not many people are excited about this movie. When I was in Endgame and saw the trailer, people actually booed for the tra for the Star Wars trailer. People hate Star Wars that much now. Um, so, but I think people like to go see a train wreck, and I think a lot of people are prepared to do reviews for the movie. So I think that we will get, like, um, some kind of better box office than Solo for this movie. I'm not sure, though. The die-hard critics and people who are curious about what this movie is and even is going to be are going to be interested, though. So, um, can't wait for December when we can talk about that. Uh, thanks for watching my video. Those are my thoughts on everything from D23. Before, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Links are below, and I'll see you next video.